So I thought I would remake my Blood In Blood Out video because once again I didn't feel like I was well spoken enough in it. Um, I'm real critical on myself uh, even though I've dealt with a stroke and a bunch of things in my life that keeps me from uh, articulating myself as fast as I'd like to and I used to be able to. Um, but I'm getting there. I'll get there with some practice. So how I came to the sight I was given that I can share with others is through prayer. And I did that because a man named the 13th Son, uh, and just, I want you to analyze his name, the 13th Son. Anyone who follows some Ebonics crap like that is a fool, like I was when I was a kid. I found him when I was around 18, and um, I got into him because at the time, a lot of the channels and stuff I was watching, I was let down by all the 2012 stuff that was amped up by, you know, charlatans in the New Age community. Uh, a lot of people just seemed like agents to me and just grifters and stuff, and it just annoyed me. And then he came out of the with the woodwork out of nowhere, and he just seemed different. Um, and um, I really just am ashamed to have listened to him that deeply. But I, I listened to every one of his videos, and I know everything he said, so you cannot debate me about it. There's nothing that you can debate me about about him. I know every single thing about him, other than maybe some stuff about his personal life. But he's pretty open like a book. That doesn't mean that's a good person always. Just because they said that they did this and that and they're admitting to it. That doesn't mean they're a good person at all. You know, that just means you have an open idea of who they are. But anyway, um, not to get on a rant and just get to the meat of things. He, I suppose, has the ability to appear in people's dreams and recruit them to his cause. Um... At the end of the journey with him, you will find out that he claims to be God. He's claiming to be the 13th one, which, in my in my opinion, he might as well be the reincarnation of Nimrod because he's also the 13th one. He has a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of his numerology and stuff surrounding him is, is 13 based. You know, it's not just, you know, Jesus isn't the only one with that. But if you look on his Twitter page, his pen tweet is they really hate that 13th son and he's has the last supper and like an afrocentric last supper, last supper. Uh, i don't know if someone made that for him or what but that's what he identifies as and that's how his followers look at him as some kind of holy rabbi which he didn't start talking like that until 2015 and that's where i came to prayer because uh, basically what he was showing about white people and stuff is that they're made by Jacob in a lab and at best they are these like demonic they're like host bodies for this dem these demonic entities and stuff it's kind of like Talmudic stuff but in an, out an Afrocentric uh, sense um, and right then I knew that he was full of it and um, I started having a lot of supernatural experiences um, like it, it seemed like he talked to me right through a video and I could link the video, but I don't really want to go back into it. It's one of his uh, last ones around 2015. Um, he uh, was talking about something about fleas attacking somebody. And all of a sudden, all these fleas started hitting my legs. And I'm like, what in the fuck is going on? You know, and I've heard other people's testimony about him coming in their dreams, terrorizing them. He claims he can do that and all these things. But I'm not afraid of him. And I haven't been in a long time. That was the only time I felt like I was under threat. So I went to prayer for the very first time in my life. And it wasn't really the very first time, but it was really the first time from the heart. And I just prayed to God about things, and I repented, and I uh, forgave people. But I did not confess to the Lord Jesus Christ my Savior and stuff. You know, the essential stuff to get saved. So I still give Cleck that, uh, um, that credit for helping me with that. Because I never uttered those words as far as I could remember. And I, don't, I did not feel saved until... 2020 excuse me so that was a pretty wild ride um, um, I had a lot of catharsis after I prayed um, and it just uh, things felt different um, I decided to take a walk and as soon as I stepped outside or even, maybe even before it felt like um, I was on a boat out on the sea and I was kind of seasick. I just felt dizzy. I, I knew something was different about my vision or my surroundings. <clears throat> and I just went back inside and I'm like, I don't know what's going on. I just lay down. I don't know if it was a, maybe a day later, or a few days later, I noticed the sun and everything was moving with me. And I'm like, what is going on? Can everybody else see this? 
is are people do people experience this individually or do they see this whole sun moving while I'm moving? And it just freaked me out. But it doesn't freak me out anymore. I know people can experience it on an individual level, so it's it's not like I'm some demon god or whatever. You know, these are things I thought though, and it really spooked me out. So I kept quiet about it. And I, uh, I my first post about it was um, censored. I, I censored uh, my my skin because I didn't want the black Hebrew Israelites to get involved. Say, so look, I'm the first black man, to, you know, whatever they want to say. I, I'm not, I don't I don't identify as black or anything. I don't care about that shit. Uh, I don't care what people think. Period about me. I'm I'm on I'm my own person. I've always been that way. I don't really care, you know. Um, and I censored my face. Um, and some some may argue I may I should have still done that, but I don't really care anymore. I've just been through so much, and it feels like I need to redeem myself and help save people. So, and this is really the best way I think I can do it, because I went through such a dark journey because of the thirteenth son. After having uh, that experience outside, um, pretty much right after um, a guy that I was subscribed to, which is still around, I said in my last video that he wasn't around, I think. No, he's still there. I just found him. And he posted the first video I ever seen about the Mandela effect. And it was uh, the Star Wars famous one. Uh, you know, Luke, I'm your father. Change to no, I am your father. And, um, you know, before memes were around, me and my cousins used to always, and my friends used to always quote that. So we do not misremember anything. And if people that you knew are saying that, they're either tears now or they're just in deep denial or something strange. Because you, I know most people remember growing up with that and quoting it and everything before internet memes even, you know. So... <clears throat> Because, I mean, that's all you had to do back in the day when you did Because if you lack substance, lack personality or whatever, you would imitate a lot of stuff, you know. Just And it just sometimes was fun to do. And I think that's why whatever this entity is, or God himself maybe in a way, behind the Mandela effect, if it's not CERN all the way, I, I believe that it's mostly CERN because most of it seems demonic. Some of it seems angelic. But I'm not going to get into all that. Um it, it does specifically target popular culture things so that everybody knows. Everybody and their damn grandmother knows about. So, um, like I said in my Mandela Effect video, it's undeniable. But let me get off that. So, since he claimed he was God, and I never heard of Gnosticism really. I'd heard of Satanism, Luciferianism stuff. I had got pulled into Joy of Satan when I was at a, like nine, ten years old because uh, you may not believe it, but here in the South where I'm at, the prominence of Satanism and Gothic culture was just through the roof. Uh, you would see at football games about 200 kids dressed like Cenobites from Hellraiser. Um, and I had got from my mom's boyfriend nothing bad about him but he just was a horror fanatic kind of still is he pulled me into horror movies at a really young age four years old and i'd already been seeing that seeing him on tv anyway and video games got me into it as well like twisted metal 2 got me into metal quite deeply um but i didn't really get into it until i got um indirectly initiated by those goth kids it just it really transformed me when I saw that stuff. It just was, I never seen anything like it. And it just kind of meshed everything that I enjoyed into a subculture that I didn't know existed at the time, which was like this gothic metalhead culture. So that's how I got into that. None of them pulled me into Satanism. I kind of found that myself. I'd seen people on the bus would read the Satan Bible, but I found theistic Satanism. And I completely rebuke and reject that now, but that's something that I kind of dipped back and forth into. But I, I immediately, not immediately, but I, I quickly got away from it at a young age because I was also into conspiracy stuff in, in fifth grade. Um, and I saw that, well, the elites practice Satanism, so why would I want to be involved with that? It was just it was very confusing. But, you know, the elites also, 
do a lot of things, but they are Satanists. Uh, don't get me wrong. You know, they, they will invoke Jesus Christ if they have to. They will go all the way with blasphemy. Look at what the Catholic Church did in the past and what they still do. Under And, and they will invoke God and everything if they have to and then get away with it. Not forever, but, you know, it's it's bad, the stuff that they've been getting away with. And in the name of God and Jesus. So, um, <clears throat> it just... Uh, I just had been deceived a bunch of times, and this was the kind of epitome of deception. And I was convinced he may be like the demiurge in the flesh because he does have like these supernatural powers and everything. People will ever give testimony that he's taken their souls and stuff. And at the same time, the, the Bible is changing. Clear as crystal to me because. Even though I didn't know the Bible that well, I knew um, the Lord's Prayer, like, forgive us our trespasses, for we can forgive those who trespass against us. It changed to forgive uh, the debtor, the debt and debtors. I don't even know how to say it now. Um, it, it changed completely. And, and the little things, like he claimed to be the lion of the tribe of Judah, and it changed to the wolf will gel with the lamb. Well, it changed to a bunch of things, but the first one was like, the wolf shall gel with the lamb. Now I think it says the wolf shall also gel with the, with the lamb. And I thought that, so, maybe the Mandela effect is like Sophia, as John Lamb Lash was saying. He doesn't say this entirely like I am, but he basically is saying that Sophia is one behind the Mandela effect, correcting things. So I thought that this was like a retribution against the 13th son and all that stuff. Because he claims the, the original Jews were blacks and all this weird We Was Kang stuff, you know. Um, but... I don't believe that. I just want to make that clear. I believe that the people in Israel are the real Jews there. I'm not a Zionist. I don't agree with what they do. Their elites do. But I have nothing against regular Jewish people. I grew up with the Jewish people. Not a bunch, but, you know, a few. Um, and I've made friends with Jewish people over the years and stuff. And I don't have a problem with Jewish people. But the elites are bad news. And they have no interest. They have no... Um, good interest against with, with their own people or anything they're in it for the money and in it for becoming god like they think they can what whatever satan promised them um so that's pretty much the whole story but it took me basically getting possessed and having a stroke and stuff and then finding jonathan clack and his information to get me to repent and get saved again because I, I thought that this was it. I thought that the line was drawn in the sand, this was a demiurge, and Gnosticism was right because of this. And I just hope the Lord forgives me because, I mean, this is a lot to take in and process. You know, this is a, this is very challenging. Having the whole scripture changes is very challenging and it's undeniable. And But at the same time, I wouldn't blame God if he just pulled the plug on things because we have behaved very badly. You know, it, it's hard to believe that. I, I don't. I don't. I don't even know how 144,000 can make it. Honestly, sometimes it, it, it's hard to believe. Sometimes that there could be. I don't know how, what percentage. It, but I, I see good people on YouTube. I meet good people in real life and stuff. But it's just people are deep in compartmentalization so I'm um, just just be glad that the minimum requirement to get saved is to confess that Lord Jesus Christ is your Savior that doesn't mean you just get to do whatever you want to do because you will be afflicted in this life by curses take it from me <laughs> take it from me you will be afflicted in this life with curses if you curse God and stuff but I didn't I, I, I took God and I cursed God as a straw man that he that the thirteenth son made him as. So I couldn't you couldn't say that I was against God. I never had been against God. I'd always taken God as a as a straw man someone made him out of. So I never was anti God. I always dealt with the straw man. I never knew him from the Bible because I never really read it. I was too infatuated with movies, games, you name it. You know, kid, you know stuff that kids are normally into these days, and in my day too. Um, but that's just how it was. I, I, that was my indoctrination. That was my inception and stuff. And like I said in uh, my other video, just imagine what these kids today are going to be like with all this woke stuff they're being indoctrinated with. It's going to be absolutely terrible. So, you know, I'm glad to be where I am now with my mind and in my health, but I'm still in a bad situation, unfortunately. 
but I'm not going to gripe about it. It's just, it's just true. You know, I'm just telling you where I'm at. And I'm not one to follow, but um, I will present things as I, as they come and as I see them. But I'm not looking for followers. I'm not looking for whatever. It, I'm just, I'm just trying to get the message out there and show the gift that I've been given and hopefully share it and show that we've been lied to about our reality and everything. So. Um, I will leave links in the description describing about what I'm saying. The 13th Sun also appears on the um, Illuminati cards with this glowing figure. And the main thing that the 13th Sun and his followers do when they're initiated is they say that they have these gl this glow around them. It's Photoshop or they just use some kind of lighting. I show a real deal thing and you cannot deny what I show. So, you know, if you want to challenge me, let's go. Because I know everything about this cult and this man. But <laughs> I don't know everything. I, I know I've I've listened to the whole audiobook of the Old Testament. Uh, I've almost finished the whole uh, New Testament. I, I know ninety percent of it now, um, but I'm not scholarly about it. I just know what I know about it, and I, I take the synchronicities and the messages as they come, and that's just what it is. Eventually, I will be um, well read into it, though, because I, it's it's a labor of love for me personally. So that's it. Uh, luckily, I've clocked in under 20 minutes like I tried to. Um, if you have any questions, you can email me. I don't really like to leave comments open due to trolls and stuff that I've dealt with um, and uh, other kinds of people I don't want to deal with. Um, but if you want to email me, my email is on my YouTube. If I upload this on BitChute, I'm not sure. Um, it's in the description uh, or my bio, whatever it is on YouTube. And that's it, guys. Peace and uh, get saved before the rapture, please. <laughs>